Number 11. This is a, simply put, it's an order of operations question, okay? And remember, it's just our order of operations. It's not the order of operations that the whole world would have to follow because it's mathematically you know, the law. But uh, it is the one that we use, and it's the one that a lot of people use. Okay? And it saves us from having to write lots and lots of parentheses to say which thing to do first. Okay? So we have parentheses, exponents, and multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. From left to right, we do multiplication, division. From left to right, addition, subtraction. Otherwise, whatever is above the other, that's what comes first, okay? As a general rule, okay? So what can we do first? We could, we could start with lots of things. In fact, we could do several things in the first step, right, as we read the second line. I guess in side of the parentheses go left to right with the multiplication. So with the multiplication? Or okay. Actually right now it'd be exponents. Right? So right. So before we multiply these two get together, we're going to respect the exponents because we just agreed to. We said this is what makes sense to us. Let's let's do exponents first. All right. So five cubed is what? Two hundred twenty-five. Uh, times six squares. 36 minus 5 cubed again is 125 times 3 squared is 9. Okay, all that happened. Divided by, can we do anything else at the same time? Can we simplify it a little bit more? Uh, you can take what's in the parentheses and you make it one number. One number, yes. 3 plus 2 is 5. Do I need these parentheses right here? Not, not really anymore. It's, it's just 5. There's nothing to do in here. So we just cube 5. Well, let's come over here. So we do 36 minus 125. Is that something I should do? Okay. There's no reason that I couldn't, other than we've already agreed that we'll do multiplication before we do subtraction. Okay. Otherwise, if we hadn't made that agreement, if we hadn't said, let's do this order of operations, let's agree to an order of operations, I would have to specifically have parentheses around these two things to make sure you do them first, okay? But there's, there's imaginary parentheses there uh, that, you know, so that we don't have to write down parentheses. I wonder if I could grab just those. Uh, okay, I don't know why I didn't get the other one. There's imaginary parentheses right there. Okay, to make them really faded, but it's like they're really there. So 125 times 36. I don't know what off the top of my head. Surprise, surprise. 4,500. What is it? 4,500. 4,500. <laughs> Minus 125 times 9. Yeah. Wait. 1125. What is it? 1125. 1125. Okay. Have we used up these parentheses yet? Are they done keeping stuff together? No. No. No, they still need to do the subtraction. The parentheses make me do the subtraction before this division. That's why we use parentheses because somebody wanted that to happen before the division. In order to make that sure that happens, we need to use those parentheses. Okay, so then what's next? 30. Uh, you have to subtract 4,500 uh, 4, from, uh, no, you have to subtract 1,125 from 4,500. Yes, very good. Which is? Okay. <laughs> 3,375. 3,375 divided by 
Well, we got five cubed there. We can go ahead and do that while we're here. Okay, what's that give us? Jared. 27. 27. What is with you, Megan? What? Yeah, what's with you? I love. Derek? Never mind. That would be so good. What problem? We just we did, did it. it. 27. Wow. Connor, did you have one from earlier? Or is that the one you had a question about? Yeah, I was actually, well, it's like, because if it's simplifying, why would you, I thought, because it's basically just evaluating, so why did I say simplify? Evaluating would mean there's a variable in there. <coughs> I guess you could, you could call it a value, but you kind of simplify it. I mean, I you tell me, what's simpler to say to someone? 3,375 divided by 125, or just say Oh, wait, that's the answer? Why is the thing taking? Oh. But it's like, but, but sometimes it's simplify, and then there's like a variable in it, so. Uh, well, if there's a variable in it, then we're going to simplify as much as possible until we can't put things together anymore because they're not like terms. So we have a variable with this. Well, it's as simple as can be. This is as simple as this can be because everything can go together. They're all numbers. If you have variables involved, at some point, if you have a variable plus a constant, you just have to leave it that way. It's as simple as it can be. Building? Okay. Right. Oh, number four, when it says evaluate the expression, would it just be, would the simplifying, would that just be 216, the answer? Are we looking at number four, you said? Yes, four. Four, yeah, four. So evaluate the expression x cubed when x equals 6, so that's 6 cubed, so that's 216, right? That's not 6, is it 216? Yes, yeah. Okay. That's all? Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's it. It's just the number 216. Hunter. Um, I'm 39, can you do that problem? Two. Take negative two, put it right there. Negative five times negative two. Parentheses make it a little easier to see what's going on here. Times four fifths. We can put these together. We get ten. Oh, that's a little too close to the last one. We get positive ten times four fifths. And this parentheses is done. We can't divide four by five. It just stays four fifths. So if we could all turn around and face front. Good. What's that? Why couldn't you multiply? Oh, I didn't say you couldn't multiply, I so said you can't divide. And we're done with this multiplication. So now the two quantities, we can have them interact, right? So I like to either write or imagine that the constant is over 1 so that I can make sure everything you know, matches up the way it's supposed to. 5 and 10 cancel each other. Times 4 is 8. Wait, you can do that? Cross cancel? Well, you would anyway if you, well, let's just back up. Let's say we just multiply them together and we didn't try and cancel them, right? Well, we would get 40 over 5. And then we try and simplify. Right? All the factors of 10 came over and combined with all the factors of 4, and the factors of 1 combined with the factors of 5. So all those factors that were like separate before are now mushed together into this one number. And now we're going to try and pull out those factors, which we could have done back here, because we knew those factors are going to become our, part of this entire numerator. If you just add the when you add the that was the problem. That took so much time. You could just pull it here. Well, I mean, if our goal is to save time, we'll oh, have a whole, a whole uh, preachy lesson about looking for the easiest way. You wind up like Wally, where you have hardly any bones left, and you're floating around in this thing. And you don't talk to anyone in person, you just have a screen in front of your face. That's the easiest way to live. Okay, so easiest is not always best. Okay. They actually they're not bad. Yeah, really, really bad. Yeah, really. Um our number is sixty seven. Yep. That. That. Wait, no, nope. Square root of one sixty nine over sixty four. 
Okay. Well, we're looking for a number. Whatever this number is, we're going to take uh, this number, multiply it by itself, and what are we going to get? We multiply this number by itself. We're looking for the square root. So the square when we find this square root, if we took the square root and multiplied it by itself, what should we get? Itself. What number? One. Oh boy. Square root of 25 is 5. Because five. Uh, if I take 5 and I multiply it by itself, what do I get? 5. 5, this is what I'm getting at. So when you multiply this by itself, what do we get? 169 over 64. 169 over 64. Well, that's going to be two fractions, right? We're going to multiply two fractions together. Get two uh, fractions. What would the denominator have to be? 8 times 8 is 64. How about for 169? 13. 13 over 8. No, of course not. Of course not. Um, oh, is it rational or rational? What's a rational number look like? A fraction. If you can write it as a fraction, it's a rational number. <laughs> no. Okay. Irrational would be where it doesn't come out to an expressible fraction, like the square root of 13, like the square root of 7, the square root of 2. These are all irrational numbers. Why is it high? Why isn't a why isn't it a rational number? Well, for one thing, I can tell you that it goes on forever. The decimal goes on forever, and it doesn't repeat. That's not rational. That's one like that's a loose definition of, a ra of an irrational number. Okay. Um, to prove that pi is not a rational number, that would uh, that would take a little work. And okay. Maybe you can find that out. I should show that later. Okay. I showed you how the square root of two can't be rational, right? I proved it to you. Uh, which is different from just saying, oh, it's a decimal that goes on forever and doesn't repeat. You just have to believe that but I've proved it to you since it's undeniable. But we haven't done that to pi, so hey, maybe pi is irrational, but there's proofs that it's not. You can accept it. You can also look up proofs that pi is irrational, and you'll get millions of results. Um, OK, so next question. Let's do 40. Forty deep sea diver and slippers. Must descend and ascend in short steps to equalize pressure in her body if the diver rises uh, toward the surface too quickly. She may suffer from a physical condition called the bends. Suppose the diver descends to the bottom in three steps of 15 feet each. How far does the diver go? So, three steps. How big is each step? 15, 15, 15. We can look at it this way, 15 feet per step. Okay, we're going to convert that to feet. How many steps does she go? Three steps. Right? The unit steps cancels steps. And 15 times 3 is 45. Next question. If any. Fifty.
Alright, so we're going to simplify this. So, as Connor was saying before, simplify sometimes it means we're going to combine everything together and get a number, and sometimes we're going to combine everything together until we can't combine things together anymore. to do first. What can you do first? One Give me a piece at a time. Yes? Me? Yep, maybe. Um, do the parentheses, the first one. These ones? Yeah. You mean put these together? Or I mean like distribute, uh, distribute, distribute okay. into those ones. Distribute into those ones. So <laughs> 15x minus 10y. Can we do it and to the next set? Do the next one. 2x plus 4y minus 9x. Plus six y. Be careful with your negatives. Negatives will mess you up so often that it, it makes me weep every time I grade tests. I see the little negative thing you get me in trouble. So when you distribute this negative three to this negative two, make sure you get positive six. Yeah? So do you distribute do you use distribute property whenever possible? Or like sometimes you don't the distributive property is something you could always apply. It's not always something you want to do just because you could do it. Uh, like in Algebra 2, we're doing problems where we're trying to solve for certain variables, and it, sometimes to distribute would be more complicated, whereas if we can kind of avoid distribution, then it's the problem becomes shorter. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're just trying to simplify, then yeah, you should distribute everything together so that you get rid of all the parentheses and hopefully get some like terms to go together. Um, well, now what should we do? Um, Combine like terms. Here's a like term. That one. These are all like terms. 15x plus 4x is 19x. Or sorry, plus 2x is 17x. Minus 9x is 8x. Negative 10y plus 4y, that's negative 6y. Plus 6y is 0, so it's just 8x. Trevor? 39. 39. Who did that? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, we did. That's somewhere right there. So we put in negative 2, we multiply together, we get positive 10, multiply, and simplify. This would be 8. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any more? to stop answering your questions if you guys are ready to start. The best way to let me know that is that you just start talking to each other. You're so bored and you're so informed that you have nothing better to do than talk to each other about not the test. Um, Zero 
right there in the middle. We can do our negatives on the left and our positives on the right. That's, that's good. So, uh, well, here's our negatives, negative 5, 6, and negative 1 half. Um, so which one's further to the left of 0, negative 5, 6, or negative 1 half? 5, 6. How do we know? Because it's more than half. Well, how are we, we absolutely sure? Well, because it's more than half. Yeah. yeah, this is more than half. How do we know that? How many 6 would a half be? 3. 3 6. So this would be, right, if we go back here, this would be 3 6. Beyond that would be 5 6 in that direction. Okay, so we took care of the negatives. Now we have three positives. Okay, well, we got fractions here, two-thirds and four-fifths, which is bigger, two-thirds and four-fifths. Uh, how do we know? Well, you could do it by hand, or you could just use your calculator and do that to do that. Well, and then you wouldn't know. And you're not the way to do it is with long division. Two thirds, three divided into two. And you just start that whole process. Oh, and you just, well, so it doesn't go into two. Well, I do. So we add a zero with a decimal. And so how many times does it go into 20? It goes in six times with three. Let's see, with uh, this goes 18. And then you subtract, because we get two. It doesn't go into two. It goes into uh -oh, 20, right? We get six. And then it just keeps on going forever. Okay, so 6.6 .6 would be Not 6.6, 6. 6. 6. 6. Um, Okay, so 2 thirds and 4 fifths, which is larger, Trevor? All right, so I'm confused. If you if you write just point 0.6 repeating, like, like with a line over it, yeah. or point, like how you have it, is that the same thing? Yeah, this is the same as that. Okay. You're just like, okay, we're getting tired of this, and let's put a line over that last one, and that way you know that. I can put a line over all these sixes. Oh, right. Is that your bus out there? Yeah. Right in, and yeah. It's driving away, I think, so. You might as well stay. Is it really driving No, away? go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, which is bigger? Oh, I don't know. Four fifths, or two thirds. Huh? Four point five. Four point five? Four, four, four fifths. How do you know? Without using your calculator, how do you know? What thing? What thing? The thing that you just showed me. This? Okay, you did long division. The whole long division should be five and four. Uh-huh. Okay. So 0. 0.8 something is bigger than 0. 0.6 something. I respect it. You did it in your own head. Let's also do it with fractions. Even it as a fraction. How would we compare these two fractions? Common. The common denominator. That's the only way you can compare two fractions or add two fractions or subtract two fractions is to have a common denominator. What is the common denominator? 15. What? How many 15s would this be? 10. 10. How many 15s would this be? 12. 12. 12 15s is more than 10 15s. So it goes 2 thirds, 4 fifths. Is 7 bigger than both of those? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. So 2 thirds, 4 fifths, and 7. Yeah. You will buy them instead of 15. What? Yeah, just pick 15. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I just had another question. Um, for 16, that just means absolute value, right? Those two bars mean absolute value. So, what's the absolute value of negative 12? Oh, it's 12. It's 12. And if I put a negative in front of that, it's negative 12. Negative 12. That's <laughs> There's no difference. Oh, it didn't, yeah, it doesn't change anything. Okay. Put a negative 12 without negative 12. Okay. Any more questions? So, any other questions? That's going to be a no unless somebody says something. Alright, let's put everything away except for. Yeah, you know, stuff that makes sense at the test, like.